Come on, baby. Don't say maybe. I gotta know your sweet love is gonna save me. All right, so I want to go over some comments from a video, or just I'll just go over some comments in general, but there's one in particular that I want to touch upon, and I uh, just want to say you appreciate these comments, fellas. Um, see, Alex, uh, appreciate that comment, I responded to that already, and then we got, uh, I don't know how to say this name, Per Jarn Michelson. Not sure if that's even close. I hope I didn't offend you by the way I said that name. But here, let me read this. question I ask is, when are you saved and when do you lose it? Would recommend all to always try. And Cracker J. Herber says, try what? Try to stay saved? I'm confused with what you're trying to make. Or I'm confused with what point you're trying to make. Once one gets saved, he is forever sealed with the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption. And Perjarn responds, If salvation cannot be lost, then why talk in this video about losing it? According to Bible, yes, it may seem one can lose it. If one can find Jesus and then reject Jesus, even after knowing all there is to know, but my point is, if one is still trying to find God, perhaps the salvation was not gone after all. Question mark. So I appreciate these comments. I think both these gentlemen are being honest, and I think they're, uh, I think they're 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 friendly. So I appreciate that very much. And so let me address this point first. In the video, I was just making a simple point that you cannot lose. Your salvation. All right. If you can't lose it, then you can't regain it. All right. And like Cracker J. Herber says, you are sealed until the day of redemption. So there's no possible way to lose it. And since there's no way to lose it, you can't regain it. And you notice there's nothing in the Bible about regaining your salvation after you've lost it. Um, so in the Old Testament, they would offer sacrifices continually to cover their sins. But now Jesus offered his body once for all. So Jesus, the sacrifice that Jesus made for us covers everything. So we can't, we don't, there's no need to, you know, to keep offering sacrifices for our sin. It's already covered. Right, those those blood sacrifices in the Old Testament were never any good anyway. So all we have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Okay, and it, and this goes all the way back, um, like to Abraham, for example, but even Noah. Uh, it, it was always about faith. It was never about being perfect. I mean, because, come on, these guys weren't perfect, not even close. Um, as far as not sinning, okay, these, these guys were as big a sinners as anybody. But they had faith, and so their faith is what was counted for righteousness. Just like today, our faith is counted to, toward us for righteousness, and it's not of, of our work. So let's go over a couple of verses here. Let's see. First of all, I want to hit this one right here. All right. So oh, I forgot about that. Um, okay. Interesting. Uh, so it, in uh, John 11, verse 25, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, Though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Okay, so if you live and believe in Jesus, you'll never die. And so to go to 
our friend's comment here. Uh, what if you you learn about Jesus and, and then reject him? Even after knowing all there is to know about Jesus, you still reject him. Well, these people obviously were never saved at any point. And, and so you, I'm sure you got to know people in your life who you've preached the gospel to, you've uh, shared uh, many Bible verses with, and shared Bible stories with, and taught them as much as you can teach them, and they still reject Jesus. Uh, there's just nothing you can do. You can't save anybody. It, you can't put your you know, hands around their neck and you know, say, you better believe in Jesus or else. You know, it just doesn't work that way. They've got to make that decision on their own. And uh, so all we can do is preach the gospel, preach the good news and say, hey, there's an escape from this wicked world. And unfortunately, too many people embrace this wicked world, right? All right, so uh, let's go. Let's hit another verse here. Uh, just to make, sort of drive this point home. It's a, it doesn't get taught enough, in my opinion, right? So where am I at? Let's see. Let's start out right up here. Verse 8. Oh, you know what I forgot? Uh, let me blow this up a little bit so you can actually see it, right? All right. So, uh, verse 8. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Right? So, two things I want to focus on here. And it says here, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself. So, you're not, so this idea of trying to save yourself, it's never going to work. You can't save yourself. Only the Lord Jesus can save you by his grace through faith, right? And if it was, if there was, you know, if you could do stuff to be saved, rich people would have an unbelievable advantage over us poor people because rich people can do incredible things. They can do more good in one single day than a poor guy like me can do for my entire life. They, they would have an incredible, incredible advantage. Um, but it, it's not about what we do. It's about what was done for us. And do we put our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ who has done it all for us? So that's really the, the challenge, if you will. You got, you got two sides. You got one that's putting their trust in what was done for us. And then you got others that are putting their trust in them own selves believing that they are good that they they uh, you know earn or they deserve heaven because they're a good person well the day's going to come when they find out they're not a good person and everything they've done has not been good enough to save them all right so that's i mean the whole the whole point of the law was to show us that we need a savior all right so uh, if we're putting our trust and our faith in ourselves, we're doomed. But we do have somebody who we can put our trust and our faith in, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ who has done it all for us. Okay, so anyways, I hope that clarifies a little bit. I wonder if I should blow this up too because this might look small. There we go. All right, let's see. I got another minute here. Let's see if i can i hope i answered that if i uh, need to elaborate more just let me know i always enjoy talking about this sort of stuff been watching your videos for years my friend and thank you appreciate appreciate that appreciate that very much all right thank you
appreciate those. I thought there was one more I was going to hit on. It's not, oh, oh, GG. I don't know if I hit on this already. GG, uh, you did a great job of uh, showing yourself to be very studied in the Bible, knowing the scripture very well, where we have a difference of opinion here. Okay, so you, what you're saying is um, like it was in the days of Nebuchadnezzar, where they had an actual image in that they were mandated or forced to bow down and, uh, you know, I don't know what they did. It probably says exactly what they did. But uh, my point is that, uh, you know, it's like today uh, people stand, they put their hand over their heart and they, you know, I don't know, bow their heads to the flag. I, I would agree that that's similar. I mean, that's very, that's in the same spirit. No question about it. Um, no question about it. So I, I think this is a fair point. Um, the, the difference is, I guess, that I would say that this image of the beast uh, is a spiritual image. Okay, so if you, if you um, think of every country in the fashion of Babylon, it's like every country has their own version of Babylon, and then all the countries are united and there's a leader at the very top of that Babylonian empire, and that's the Antichrist, or used to be, uh, you know, Caesar. They now call him the Pope. That's how I look at it. And so um, I don't believe that there's gonna, they're going to, you know, unveil this, you know, golden calf or whatever. And say everybody must bow down to this, um, you know, piece of metal or whatever, what have you. I believe it's already happening. Um, it's already here. So that's why, you know, you probably you've probably heard me warn against futurist because futurists will say everything is going to happen in the future, and then preterists are the opposite. They say everything's already happened. So, like, the problem with futurist, for example, is that, well, the Antichrist hasn't come yet. So I would love to see that conversation you have with Jesus when he comes and you, you're, you have to stand there and explain to him that he can't come yet because the Antichrist hasn't come yet. Or the mark of the beast hasn't come yet. Or like this... Uh, you know, the image of the beast hasn't been revealed yet. Those, those sorts of things. I would love to stand there and see that conversation you have explaining to Jesus why he's wrong. <laughs> and I mean, that's that's the predicament you're going to be set in. Uh, so I want to encourage everybody to realize this stuff is happening right now. It's being revealed to us in real life time, in real time. Anyways, that's my opinion. And I, I appreciate you know, just because... You have a different opinion. It doesn't mean I don't want to hear it. I want to hear it and because maybe I'm wrong about something or maybe I can understand what I know a little bit better. So there's, there's always something to be gained here by having these sorts of conversations. Having different viewpoints is a good thing. It helps sharpens both of us. So that's all right. So I've gone on too long, but I do appreciate that. Uh, I appreciate you sharing that with me, G. G. And the generational curses, uh, yeah, I, I got two seconds here. Let me see. Maybe there. So I don't, I don't, uh, you know, if you're, if you, if your parents or your grandparents, you know, if they had some bad habits, maybe you pick up on them, uh, those sorts of things. But I don't believe that you're condemned with a curse because your parents, uh, you know, committed a sin. Of course, you make a fair point with Adam. He sinned, so therefore we're all cursed with Adam's curse. Uh, but I think I, I don't. I wouldn't relate everything to that. All right. And but uh, at the same time, the good news is. Uh, oh, this I got two seconds. Let me see if I can find it here, and I got three seconds. 
Okay, okay. I got two seconds here. Hold on a second. Oh, it's not going to let me. It's not going to let me there. Okay, oh, no. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon men for all, for that all have sinned. All right, so um, that was not the verse I was looking for. Okay, for as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Okay, that's enough. Thanks, guys.